Recently, the cities of Coquitlam, Port Moody, and Port Coquitlam worked together to erect signage which now marks the route which Terry Fox ran in preparation for his Marathon of Hope. To mark the occasion, a rally and walk was held at Terry Fox High School on Saturday, April 4th. Tri-Cities Community TV was there. Uh, without the support of uh, our three mayors, councils, the MLAs, and our MP for the area, and I really, really do appreciate what you've done. Thank you. <laughs> and I, the other thing that's really important, an event like this doesn't happen just with a couple people. I also want to really make sure that we thank all the people behind, behind the scenes that help make the Terry Fox training route a reality. Um, staff at our three cities, they were awesome, and I see some of them here today. Um, they really helped us get through the approval process and put up the signs, and it would be great to thank you all individually, but I think you know who you are, and we all appreciate what you did. Um, the people that helped design and make the signs, the promotional material, the website, School District 43 and, and QP, who you know, gave us a custodian to open up the school today. Uh, universal flagging, the people out on the route. If you ran the route, I think you know that they came through big time. They did a great yeah. job. Yeah. Uh, and Eric Muller and uh, the team of volunteers who were out there, it, again, it's what made things happen. The fire departments for our three cities, Poco Fires here, Coquillum, they all volunteered their time in Port Moody to do the water stations and provide first aid, so yeah. thank you. Donna White and the foundation staff who took on another project and really, again, worked really, really hard. And thank you all for coming out. This is what it's all about, is coming out and acknowledging Terry and what he did. And so you guys are the ones that make it happen. So thank you very much. Thank Thanks, Mark. Okay, we have a number of speakers here. First, we'll have MP James Moore up here to say a few words. So this is... Um, this has been a pretty special week uh, in, in the legacy of Terry Fox. The largest museum in Canada is called the Canadian Museum of History. It's just a stone's throw from Parliament's Hill. And it's being renovated for Canada's 150th birthday in 2017. And the first exhibit that they've put together is of Terry Fox. And it opened this week. It's a nine-month exhibit. It has, has all of the great pieces of leg uh, Terry's legacy. And it's on display for all Canadians to see. And it's quite impressive to have such broad Canadian support. I can tell you, when the, and it opened that night, it was a, it was a beautiful moment. This, this little boy, who, who couldn't have been six years old, was standing next to a glass case, and it had one of Terry's legs in it, and his father was there explaining Terry's legacy and his story and everything that Terry was, and it was a really beautiful moment. It was so fantastic to have all of Terry's family there in Ottawa to celebrate and to launch this exhibit so all Canadians can, um, can, can understand how special Terry is to us locally, to us as British Columbians, and indeed to all Canadians, because he really is one of the greatest Canadians uh, of all time. So I want to thank all the volunteers, all the organizers who made uh, today uh, possible. We are all so incredibly proud of Terry, and to be in Terry's neighborhood, so close to where he was born and raised, so close to where he trained for the Marathon of Hope, so close to where he is resting. And for us as locals to keep Terry's legacy alive and with events like this is really something special. So thank you to the volunteers, to the runners, and to everybody for making today, uh, to today a reality. It's, it's a really special, I know, to the Fox family, and it's a great moment for, for the community. So thank you. We also have three MLAs here, Linda Reamer, Mike Farnworth, and Doug Horn. Want to all come up here together? Uh, thank you to everyone for being here. Um, I'm Mike Farnworth, the MLA for the area, and with a number of people here I recognize. We went to school with Terry Fox. He was in our class. And I don't think any of us at that time when we were 13, 14, really realized what a remarkable individual he was going to become. Because in those days, he was just one of us. He was a Poco kid. Um, and he went on to do something truly, truly remarkable that uh, I don't think any of us could ever have envisaged. And what a story it is. Um, a young man from Poco, battling cancer, had a vision and a dream of what he wanted to do to find a cure. And that remarkable run across our country that united our country in a way I don't think anybody could have predicted. And 35 years later, that dream continues and we see it in runs around the world, and knowing that one day that dream of curing cancer is going to come true. And it started right here in this neighborhood, in our town of Port Coquitlam, 
and I think that that's something all of us can be incredibly proud of. So thank you so much for coming out today. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of my constituents uh, from Port Moody, Coquitlam, also includes Anne Moore and Belcara, and on behalf of Premier Christy Clark and the province of British Columbia, it's an honor for me um, to be here today to celebrate Terry. I'm pleased that our provincial government was able to uh, donate some funding for this event today. As we all know, Terry had much courage, determination, bravery, uh, focus, and uh, he is truly a remarkable individual. Uh, it was my pleasure um, in the legislature, every member in the legislature, and both my colleagues here spoke eloquently to make uh, Terry Fox Day the second Sunday after Labor Day uh, forever, and uh, we were very pleased to do that. Terry was, I had the opportunity to read Terry's story. Um, Raleigh had given me a book back in the fall, and in that book, um, I really did come to understand that while Terry was young, he was actually wise beyond his years. And he was truly a remarkable individual. He ran 5,000 kilometers. I had the pleasure of seeing him up at Simon Fraser University. It's hard to believe 35 years has gone by. And Terry used to run around the academic quadrangle up at Simon Fraser University. And you used to hear the click of his prosthesis uh, as he was training uh, for his Marathon of Hope. So I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for coming out today and to thank the volunteers and especially Mark Petty who put all this together to celebrate Terry and all the preparation he did uh, to realize his dream of finding a cure for cancer. Thank you so much. It's great to be uh, here with everyone today, and I'll uh, make it very brief, given my two colleagues to spend some time. But you know, I, I really would like to say, you know, the one thing that Linda was talking about was the uh, was the the, uh, the bill that was going through the house, uh, you know, to basically proclaim Terry Fox Day in perpetuity. And and it's one of the things, you know, people, so, you know, Terry brings people together, you know, and it was, you know, all three of us and and you know everyone on all sides of the house came together really to support that great uh, that great bill and, and, and moving that forward it, it really talks to you know what Terry has really brought to to all of Canada it's, it's such a great thing it brings us all together it brings the community together and it really is a special thing so it's wonderful to see everyone today and thanks to all the volunteers and everyone else and just to let everybody know over here we have t-shirts we have books you can make a donation to the terry fox foundation before you start your uh, community walk here today so there we go we have the mayors here from port coquitlam port moody and uh, coquitlam greg moore richard stewart and mike clay thank you and i will tell you that the three of us got together so i'm going to speak on behalf of all three of us um, <laughs> So, uh, and I want to thank my colleagues for allowing me to speak here in our Tri-Cities here in Port Quillam and, and recognize all of our councils that are here to support this today. This is, um, you know, we've, we've heard that this is a family event and, you know, it's great to have uh, the family here, but the family of Port Coquitlam and Coquitlam and Port Moody just coming together. And when Mark Petty and, and Donna and the Foxes came down, they, they here's how they, they had a meeting and they asked the three of us to come together and said, hey, we think we want to do this. Would you guys be supportive? And absolutely, right from the beginning, it was such a great vision to be able to do this and mark this training route. And part of what was really inspirational about today um, was today was probably, 35 years ago, was probably the last day that Terry trained this route before starting the Marathon of Hope. So it is a really remarkable day if you think about what he did. And, and part of the, uh, what James talked about in the exhibit that you, if you have to get to Ottawa to go check it out, um, is that Terry would do this once, twice, maybe even three times a day. And one of the things that Daryl was sharing with us was um, in his journal, there was never a time it wasn't about how fast he did it, it was about how many miles he put in, right? Because he knew that he had to build the mileage up to be able to do what he wanted to do. And I think if you think through that and, and what we go through in today's life, where everything's ma marked by time, right? I got to get there, my phone's telling me to get somewhere. 
where this was it. This was marked by a dream and a vision. And here we are still following in Terry's footsteps to complete that dream and that vision. So I really want to thank Mark and Donna and all of your team and the Fox family for again continuing this legacy, this journey that we as a family are in together. And we as a family will continue that dream until we, until we complete Terry's dream. So thank you for coming out today. Okay, we have Doug Allward here, and uh, Doug was instrumental, obviously, in the Marathon of Hope because he drove the van. Yeah. Um, I remember, it was just over, back in 1979, early 1979, Terry phoned me up, and told me about this dream of running across Canada for cancer research. And because I was a runner, he wanted to get my advice. Well, what do I know about running on one leg? And what did anybody in those days know about running on one leg? And of course, we didn't have the internet then, so there's nothing really to look up. We were two naive young guys. So Terry, I came over here and I lived on the other side of Port Coquitlam and I, I looked at what Terry had figured out, how to jump on the one good leg and swing the primitive artificial leg through. And I thought, gee, that doesn't look too easy. <laughs> um, and at, and that, at that time he'd figured out how to run about a quarter of a mile and he, all the only advice I could give him was as a runner is you start slow at, at about 100 meters a day and let your body adapt and slowly work up. And I said, well, if you do that 100 meters extra every day for a year, you'll be up to 36 kilometers in a year. <laughs> and I left him with that thought and I knew Terry because I'd grown up with him that he would do it. It, it was whatever, I remember in school work, if, we were taking physics and we were struggling with it and he said, I want to get an A. He'd figure out how to get an A. Um, basketball, uh, grade eight, we had 25 guys on the team and this is not an exaggeration, he was the 25th player on the team and he sat on the bench all year. But he had a dream to get better and to, and he practiced and practiced and practiced, and by grade 12 at Port Coquitlam Senior High School, he was the best player on the team, and as people who know his story, he went on to make the team at Simon Fraser University. Terry, um, he was such a humble guy. When any, anybody tried to make a hero out of him, he would say, I am just one member of the Marathon of Hope. All you people being here today are equal with him as being members of the Marathon of Hope, so thank you for coming. There you, you know, we got this thing on our shirt. It says, this is the best 10 miles in the whole world. It's my 10 miles. And if, I don't know how many people here did that 10 miles this morning or know the route. I ran it with him just over 35 years ago, and I said, I'll never do this route again. <laughs> and I did it again today, and I thought, I don't know how he thought this was the best 10 miles in the whole world. <laughs> you know, he, the sidewalk going up Lincoln here is exactly the same. Of course, a lot of the road has changed, but when you get out to Ioko Road, I think the sidewalk there is a lot of the same. And you, you can't go on the road, you gotta go down all the little humps between the driveways, which is doubly difficult with an artificial leg. And uh, one of the incredible things I learned about T Terry was he had an amazing ability to convince himself that he could do something. And I think, to, I figure he ran this 10 mile route over 200 times in training and mentally to, to do that, he had to convince himself it was a good route. <laughs> you know? I, I, and, and of course, when we went across Canada, the weather was, 
just awful. Some, you know, especially at the beginning in April, it was sub-zero temperatures all day. We got snow, and probably the biggest enemy he had was the wind. Always seemed to be going from here to Newfoundland. <laughs> and it was vicious. And I remember once, you know, like I, what I'd do is I'd drive the van, I'd get out of the van um, with a glass of water and an orange, and then I'd hop back in the van immediately. I'd drive one mile exactly and mark the mile. So there's a psychological gimmick we'd play that he's got to catch that van. And I, I remember once I drove the mile up, and I thought, i, I got to try and keep in shape while I'm here and not just sit in the van all the way across Canada. So I hopped out of the van, and I tried running back towards him. And then when I was getting near him, I'd, I'd run back towards the van to get the water and the ju uh, orange out. And I, I remember running towards the van. It was sub-zero weather, and I thought, this is ridiculous. The wind was just incredibly strong, and I thought, this guy's got to do this all day. And I hopped in the van. I never got out again the whole trip. <laughs> so, and I'm a runner. <laughs> so, you know, when I look at it now, it's, it's, it's absolutely incredible what he did. And if he came and told me today what he was going to do, I'd say that's impossible. But at the time, we were so naive and young, you don't really have any mental limits. So, uh, anyway, thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention a few other things here that people don't, you know, if you don't really know the story, how many kilometers he actually ran in training and then on the run. He actually ran over 10,000 kilometers in total. And in the, the eight months from January 1st, 1980, to when the run ended on September 1st, he ran over 8,000 kilometers in eight months. And when I mean ran, he, he would refuse to walk. If, in his view, he had to run, hop all the way on that one leg. He, was, he, he considered walking cheating for him because he, he wanted to prove he was an athlete. Um, the, the other thing that we didn't know at that time, it wasn't until I checked the internet three years ago to see the progression of world records for uh, amputees that it showed the world record in 1980. And I just about fell out of my chair when I saw it. He broke the world record by over 100 minutes every day for 143 days at the marathon distance. We just assume there's lots of one-legged marathon runners in the world. <laughs> so, um, Terry didn't know it. In other words, if he, if he knew how fast he was actually going, he probably said, I can't run that fast. But, so, it, it is truly incredible what he did. Um, the other thing, too, you know, I remember Terry's artificial leg cost $700. Well, today, you, if you've ever seen the incredible bionic limbs that they run with, even in the Olympic uh, World Championships, I think there's a guy running in the 400. Uh, it, they're bionic. They're, apparently, they cost over $50,000 for a leg today, which is, it just shows you the progression of artificial limbs over the years. And I just wanted to read a few things that uh, Terry wrote either uh, in, in his biography or said. Uh, what it was, here, here's what it, he said it was like for him to run. I had some blisters. It was like running on hot coals. I had some sores that just rubbed raw and would bleed, and the blood would run down my knee and leg. I had bone bruises. My toes and heel were totally blistered raw. I lost three toenails. I had shin splints for two months. There were times it really hurt, but I kept going. I broke the run down. Get to the next sign. Get around the next bend. Get that mile down. Shortly after Terry started running in Newfoundland, Terry wrote the following in his journal. Today we got up at 4 a.m. The first miles were agonizing. All uphill with sub zero 60 kilometer an hour winds in my face. I started to feel dizzy and was seeing eight pictures of everything. It was frightening. 
was the run finished? Would I let everybody down? I told myself I would keep going. If I died, I would die happy doing what I wanted to do. I cried. I knew I may die. But my spirit didn't die. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Terry's brother, Fred, is going to say a few words now. I'm hurting. Um, well, thank you very much. I I'm not sure about, um, I'm sure Daryl and Judy are feeling the same way I am today. Uh, actually, fairly a lot of emotion going through right now. Um, I haven't really been in this area a lot over the last few years. We grew up, as everybody's going to find out, hopefully here in a few minutes, uh, not maybe a kilometer down the road here, and uh, lots of emotion here. This is where it all really all started for Terry. I, I you know, I, our our parents moved us out from, thank God, from Winnipeg <laughs> uh, in, in 1966, and we lived a couple of years in Surrey. Got over there real quick, and uh, and, and moved into Port Coquitlam and. Uh, and I often say when I try, get a chance to travel across the country, I mean, you know, we moved from Winnipeg and, and that was great for our family. And I, and I often wonder if Carrie and our you know, mom and dad hadn't moved us to Port Coquitlam, um, whether we'd even be here today. Because, uh, you know, the, the, the neighborhood, the, the schools that we went to, the teachers that Terry had, the, uh, the teachers that supported Terry and inspired Terry and encouraged him. Uh, came from this area and, and you know see a lot of the people around here today that Terry went to school with and it, it was an amazing time for us. Um, uh, you know Terry as we've said many times was just that average kid who had to work a little bit harder and, and so many of you know that from seeing Terry. Um, when Terry after he was diagnosed with cancer and you know he got better and he was training and up at SFU and then he decided to run. I, I wasn't living at home anymore and I didn't get to see those training miles and he you did like Doug said he ran over 5,000 kilometers in training just before you know just to get ready for the Marathon of Hope and I used to work at Ioko Refinery. I started there um, about three months after four months after Terry passed away and and often the guys I worked with would say, you know, we used to see Terry running along Ioka Road as we were driving to work or back from work, and, uh, you know, and, and how that impacted them. So, you know, to be able to run today and to be on that same route, and I want to thank you all for, for those of you that were out there and, and participating in that. It was amazing. Um, uh, I, I, I first of all want to thank a few people. Uh, Mark Petty for uh, taking this on. Um, you know, not, it was before Christmas, maybe back in November, that Daryl and I sat with Mark in the Waves uh, coffee shop on Shaughnessy and talked about a whole bunch of different things, and Mark picked that up, and then, you know, I, I, we probably wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Mark taking it on, and, and Paul, and, and, and uh, the BC office, uh, the foundation office, and, and the three Amigo mayors, uh, for, uh, you know, Greg and, and Mike and Richard, uh, for you guys for allowing this to happen in your community. Uh, you know, uh, this community has grown so much, so I want to thank you for that. Uh, Terry would be so happy to know. Daryl and I have often said in the last, I think, six months is, like, it's 35 years, and every time we turn around, it's something else, whether it was ex the exhibit opening in, in Ottawa or Terry Fox Day, <laughs> Linda, in, in BC, and it's going to happen in Ontario. and. And there, we had an opportunity to sit, sit in the House of Commons uh, and, and watch the activity there on uh, Wednesday and, and Terry, Terry's story be told there. And, and there is a unanimous support of Terry right across this country. And uh, uh, it's amazing. So I want to thank you all for, for being here. Um, we're going to walk, I, I think, down, down the road here past our house. Um, when you go by there, say hi wave at the house, and say hi to Doug and Terry. That's the couple that live in that house. <laughs> and, and, and Terry ran 3,339 miles. Our house number on Morrill Street is 3,000. 
337. So enjoy your day. Thank you so much for being here on behalf of our family. And, uh, and Doug, you're fantastic. So yes. thank you. <laughs> Thank you.